The main user flow in our app is looking pretty good, so let's move over to creating some loading animations. There are two different types that we'll create. The first will be a simple looping animation to use whenever there's a loading state. And then we'll also create a full page transition to use when there's a larger amount of information to be loaded. For the full page transition, we're going to use what's called progressive loading. You might have seen something similar in the Facebook app or in other iOS apps. And this will show some of the basic UI elements and labels before the rest of the content is fully loaded. Basically, we show the content that we know will be the same every time, and then as the custom content comes in, we show that as well. The Apple Human Interface Guidelines specifically say to show the screen immediately and use placeholder text, graphics, or animations to identify where content isn't available yet. Then replace these placeholder elements as the content loads. So we'll be doing something similar in our app to load in just the labels and to then animate in the rest of the data after a short delay. To create both the loading indicator and the full page loading transition, we'll be using Studio's timer feature and masks. We'll be looking at the individual loading indicator first and talking briefly about how masking works. So here you can see we have three artboards. The first one is empty, the second one has our logo, and then the third one is empty. Once we get to the third one, we're gonna jump instantly back over to the first one. I wanna talk briefly about how masks work on images first and then we can jump back to the loading indicator. So I'll take this artboard and copy it over. I wanna crop it down just to the center cup. So I'll unlock the dimensions and then just click and drag. If you look in the layers panel, you can see it's just the images. There's no masks or anything like that. It will automatically mask the image and center it within the mask. So we'll resize that and then hit C to create an interaction and we'll jump straight to it by hitting edit timeline. When we press play, we see that it zooms and masks without having to create any actual masks just with using the image resizing. This works really well if it doesn't really matter how it's cropped or if you want it cropped to the center. If you do want something masked a little more specifically, we'll look at that in our loading indicator. And so if we go into this, there's four groups each one has a mask that's the shape of these individual elements, and then there's a large rectangle just outside of it. So if I move this over, you can see it comes into the mask and it's visible. So we're leaving the masks where they are, and then moving the rectangles into view of that mask. We'll create our interaction. On this one, we want to select the whole artboard because that will give us some of these additional options. The keyboard trigger will let you select any key on the keyboard to start your animation, but we'll use the timer trigger. We'll leave everything and hit save for now, and then do the same on this one. Finally, on our third step, we'll link it back to the first one, and rather than timer, we want this one to happen instantly. Let's preview this. This would already work pretty well, but I think we can make it a little better. We'll jump into the timeline. I wanna make it look like these S's are being drawn in. So we'll select the top part of the first one, the bottom part of the first one, we'll offset that just a bit so they overlap. And then on the third one, we'll add a little pause, and then the fourth one will overlap as well. All right, so it looks like the two S's are being drawn in, and we'll do a similar thing as they go out. Finally, we want the state with the fully loaded logo to stay in just a little longer than the empty state. So on timeout, we'll change that to one second. That's basically just a delay for the timer animation. And then if we go back to the first one, we'll set it to 0.5. Moving back over to our core app, I've added a button that says connect subscriptions. And since this is a fictional app, it will basically just automatically detect all of our subscriptions and import them. When we press that button, we want to end up on this screen, but we'll have an in-between screen first that shows just the labels. I'll copy this over. Any information that wouldn't be loaded in immediately, we're going to change it to opacity zero. And then for the graphs, we'll have them start all at the same height and then animate in. So a good trick for this, I'll select the group that they're in, 
and change it from group to container. That will let me use percentages to get them all the same height. And then I'll select all of the rectangles, align them to the top, and then change height to 100%. For these, I'll press zero to put them all back to full opacity. And then on categories, I'll do the same, but these will always be from greatest to least, so I'll leave the colors. So now that we have our middle state set up, we'll select the Connect Subscriptions button, create an interaction, we'll leave this one on Tap, and then change it to Motion. And then for the second step, we'll select the whole artboard like we did for the loading animation, and then select Timer. This time we want a 0.5 second delay, and we'll leave this on Motion as well. Since we've changed these to Container, We'll have to change them to container in the final state. And then when we preview it, you can see it immediately loads in all of the labels. And then after a short delay, it loads in the rest of the information. So this is a great way to connect both the tap and the timer triggers, and also to improve how fast it seems like your app is moving even more. We're loading in the information that we already have, so there's already a sense of progress before all of the data is loaded in. So now we have some pretty good indicators as people are interacting with our app. In the next video, we'll go over how to show what the next step should be if they're not taking those actions.